and you want to challenge me, go ahead. Did this guy post any answer, guys? This is our question. The Quran says, good men for good women, bad women for bad men, it's a destiny. Is that accurate in this earth, or this is a fraud? Very simple. Go ahead. Do you agree? Uh, how many of you here are, are you know first time if you are first time here seriously no, no don't put don't put one if you are not if you are here first time give us one please uh, we don't give links for debate we, we we take only skype those links are useless because the second we post it uh, uh, most of them they will start playing games, they're playing porn, you know. We did that before. And uh, this is a guy, maybe he is one of them. We use Skype only. If you are here first time, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, and uh, YouTube, don't send notification for my videos. Uh, feel free to join us in Patreon. It's for free. You do not need to make any donation. It's for free. All right. Uh, Patreon is like you know, is like my Facebook page, and this is the always uh, the way to find where which channel I will be in because we have many channels. And you know, uh, YouTube they always side with the with the devil. Uh, so in case we lose a channel, we always we create a new one. We have many. You know, this one have 90,000, the other one have 80 something. I mean, there's many. It take a few minutes to switch channels. Uh, no, Andrew, we are not using debate TV. And, and now I'm not using Skype, actually. I am now overseas, so I'm not using Skype. I'm not taking calls now. We will start taking calls maybe soon. Uh, Adam said, Allah wrote, 40 years before his creation, what he would do. The angels were right in the Quran when they said he would do, he would do mischief men, right? Well, obviously, the, well, all of us, we know that Adam, he commits sin, right? According to Islam and according to Christianity, which Muhammad, he told some of the story from the Old Testament. Uh, but what's funny about it, if Muhammad, he, uh, sorry, if, if uh, the religion of Muhammad, the pagan Muhammad, uh, claiming that Allah, he made a destiny to Adam to commit sin. So what is the sin? What is sin? He wrote it 40 years or one day, doesn't matter. Yeah, and I agree with you, it says 40 years. But then we need to ask ourselves, what is sin? You see, sin is when you do something against the will and the guidance of God. All right? If you do what God wants you to do, you are a good guy. Correct? Do we agree? So, as long as the Muslim believe in destiny, and Allah wrote the destiny of Adam, so where is the sin of Adam, and where is your sin and my sin? Islam is a stupid religion, if we can call it a religion. Because sin can be called sin only if you do against the will of God. And if your will is not the one who is in function, how in the world my sin can be called sin? My sin actually should be called good because I did exactly what Allah wants. Islam literally the most stupid cult ever you can imagine. So this is the story of Adam and uh, you know we repeat this one many times. 
Adam and Moses, they are debating, which is very funny because how Adam met Moses? Muhammad is a time machine, flying time machine. So uh, uh, Adam, his, uh, Moses, he said to Adam, because of you, you know, you are the one who get people out of paradise, which means Moses is not a Muslim. Why? Because Muslims, we don't believe in original sin. And this original sin, original sin, because of Adam, we are out. Original sin doesn't mean that Adam sinned and we did not sin. No, we follow the steps of Adam. But the first one who did sin as an origin is Adam, and we follow his step. Here we say, we see, that Adam and Moses debating, and uh, Moses says to him, proving that Muhammad, he lied when he say Moses was a Muslim. Because as you see, this is a debate that's supposed to happen in heaven, according to Muslims. Because of you, we are out of paradise. But it's very funny. Uh, he's saying that, but he's in paradise. <laughs> anyway, uh, by your sin, as you see, by your sin. And thus made them miserable. Adam replied, Moses, you are the one who Allah, he selected for his message and his dark uh, talk. You play me for a thing which Allah had ordained for me before he created me. In the Fahir it says 40 years before my creation. And then Allah Messenger said, uh, So Adam overcome Moses and he repeat that three times, as usual. And this is Al-Bukhari. So even, even the logic of sin in Islam is not, is stupid. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because sin is, this is not sin. You see, even Adam, he said, do you play me? Do you play me? You don't. Right? Uh, please send your debate link to Texor. Okay, Texor, no problem. Um, I will give you a link to debate me. Uh, if you can confirm that you are a real person, not a scam from those kids who play videos and play porn when you call me. So what about, as long as you are a person who is qualified to debate me, uh, can you make a challenge to me in your page on Facebook, as an example? Can you post in your Facebook page a challenge to me? Send it to me in Patreon. I will click at the link and I will see it says, you said you challenge me to debate Christian Prince. I will see that you are a real man, you know, a real person, who have a profile there, you have a followers, and I will give you the link right away to call me. Go ahead. Because we don't want, to, we don't want kids here, you know. And if he is a man, he can answer here. I will put his answer in the, in the, in the screen. Answer as much as you want. I am now overseas, and uh, you know I'm not using use, actually using the like the actual setup. That's why I'm using stream, Streamyard. I never use those things. I don't like them actually. Go ahead, put your answer. But he's a scam, like the rest. Uh, did they leave the purse? Uh, no, actually, uh, you know, we are still working in Singapore to find the purse of Eve. Uh, we found only one broken nail of her, you know. Um, it was like, according to the uh, scientists, so they are digging, uh, it's like seven uh, meter long nail, you know. Yeah. She broke uh, her nail because she was scratching the sperm of Prophet Muhammad. It's very tough sperm. This is what Aisha she used to do. Imagine, I mean, imagine how filthy this man is. The wife, she's not washing his clothes. She is scratching, scratching the semen of her husband from his clothes. And he go out and the semen is still there. <laughs> the dry semen. And the funny is, those, those things are written by the Muslims. And Aisha, she was proud about it. I used to scratch the semen of the Prophet. I mean, look, imagine if we give Aisha a Facebook page, what she would do? She would take a picture. This is the semen of the Prophet. This is the poopoo of the Prophet. 
The Prophet, when he used to do fast, he sucked my tongue. Picture. The Prophet and the Aisha sucking the tongues of each other. He sucked her tongue. Let me show you this hadith. Uh, let us take this uh, comment first. Okay, let us see where we can find it. Mm, let us type in English. Maybe that will make it easier. Uh, yeah, I think yellowish. Yellow wish. Let us see how lucky we are. Look at this. Imagine you give a Facebook page to Aisha. One of the narrated Aisha, one of the wives of Allah Messenger, Allah pray on him and salute him, joined him in itikaf. So she noticed a blood and yellowish discharge from her <coughs> pee pee and put a dish underneath under her when she prayed. Can you imagine? What the heck is that? Imagine your wife. Let us say you are not a prayer, or just a normal man. You are praying. And your wife, she noticed that something dropping from her private part. I'm not going to see the P word. Because this is what she is talking about. She noticed some drop, drop of blood, and it's yellowish. Why it's yellowish? I mean, blood and yellowish blood. Why? You ask a doctor about. It. If you are a doctor, help us maybe. You know. Uh, so <laughs> she noticed some drop of yellowish discharge. Discharge. What do you mean? What, what exactly is that? She put a dish and she prayed. So now she have a dish under her vagina next to her husband. And her private part is dripping yellowish. And this is the news. So imagine if Aisha, she have Facebook page. Can you believe it? You know, we don't want to insult our Lord. But we have, you know, uh, uh, we have a woman who been chosen by God. Her name is Mary. And you will see that Mary when she speak to Jesus. She speak and she is sure who is her son is. She is chosen for a reason because of Jesus and she was the perfect choice for the perfect reason. A woman who respect herself she will never open her mouth and say such a thing in public. When Jesus went to the wedding, the blessed Mary, she said, she's asking him to do a miracle. She said to him, you do something. And Jesus, he said, it's not time for me, women, to do anything. Because he loved her, he did what she is asking for. See, she was sure that Jesus, the Lord, he can do what nobody can do. She said to the servant, do as he say. Mary is asking to help those people in the wedding. And Jesus is not time for him to do so. 
This is not what I'm here for. But because he loved Mary, for she is the perfect woman chosen by God to deliver the Messiah into us. Aisha, she is chosen by Allah according to Muslims. And she is the most beloved woman to Muhammad. And if you ask any Muslim, he will say to you, she is the most decent. But we have a proof from their books that Aisha, she was a hooker and she used to hunt men from Quraysh by decorating a slave and she make her run after she put nice makeup on her. So youth, young men, they will follow her and then they will come to the house of Aisha and sleep with her. And this is in the Sunni books. But imagine a woman, she is claiming to be the wife of the Prophet. Speaking to society is the society of the Prophet. And she speak in such a language about her private part and the private part of other women of Muhammad. Or when she say the Prophet, he sucked my tongue. Or she say that the Prophet, when I have my period, he ordered me to put a sheet around my vagina and he rubbed him private part on me and the blood on the sheet. Here you notice how low, how trashy the women and the husband. What kind of women she will go in public and she will say what her husband was doing with her. Actually, Muhammad himself, he said, that only bad women they would do such a thing but he did not see his wife doing it that the women she speak about what she do with her husband in the bedroom she's a bad woman but this is what Aisha she was saying I'm going to be what? it's okay <clears throat> All right. You know, uh, sometimes me myself, like I feel, uh, I feel disgusted for a language I have to use. Like, I cannot speak about Muhammad without saying the word penis because this is what this religion is about, vagina. And then the Muslims they quote for you from the Old Testament about. Uh, what, what they think it's about two women they, they went after they lost uh, but those are about two cities and this is condemning two cities this is not about, even about women this is about the sin of two cities but here you see the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan when did that he says this is in your book do you accept do you do you dare to read this to your children do you dare he said to the Christian, do you dare to read this to your children? You know, uh, here you see the stupidity, that there's things you can say to the children, and there's things you cannot and you should not say to the children. Why? Because they are children. First, they don't understand. Secondly, this book is not made for the children, you stupid idiot. Can we show the children in the Quran what the Quran is saying and what it means? Like when the Quran described big breast, a woman nobody touched their vagina and nobody open it. <coughs> can I? Can I? Uh, if I if I recite uh, as an example this verse. Oh, I'm typing in English. <coughs> If I type those verses to a children, a child, a girl, a, a boy, hmm? what, how I can explain that uh, uh, to him? And look at the Muslim translation trying to cover up. What the Muslim they will say to me? Well, this is not a verse made for children. Oh, okay. So there is verses made for children in the Quran, and those verses are not made for children. What is this? How I can explain to a child this verse? You help me. Hmm? And this is a verse made by Allah? 
This is not metaphorical. Like in the Bible, it says, speaking about two cities, describing them as two females. This is about females, real ones. Allah, He promised the Muslims that those females, they have the skin, He described even the skin inside their vagina. Their prophet, He described even how you, excuse my language, how you F them. Dahman, Dahman. You know, Dahman, Dahman is when uh, uh, you use violence. Violence, effing. And then you will see a hypocrite Muslim saying to you, do you, do you dare to read this to your child? This is their religion. It's about effing. Their God is the God of Ephraim. Their Prophet is, even the Prophet, Muslim, they claim that the Prophet in the heaven, he claim that Allah will give him the power of 100 men in heaven. If you have my book, Six in Allah, <coughs> you can read it. 100 men in heaven uh, 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 sorry, the, 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 uh, a man in heaven a man in heaven, he will have the power of 100 men in earth, an ifin, so each man. And then Muhammad, he will have the power of 40 men in heaven. Now for sure, the depend in the hadith, the number can change up or down. So, uh, uh, based on some hadith, Muhammad, he will have the ability of 400, some hadith says 4,000, some hadith says way more of ifin. And then you ask yourself, why Allah is giving Muhammad such a power in ifin if the Muslim himself cannot stop ifin? What power of 4,000 men would do? If a normal Muslim, he will not stop ifin. He can't even take a break. So how Muhammad can have more power if that one cannot take a break from Ifin, and what kind of God he gave a promise about Ifin and why Ifin is so important? Because he's an Ifin God. <laughs> you know? This is a truth which nobody wanna share with you because they don't want to use the the, the, the bad language, right? Uh, some people they say we cannot use such a language, but this is a truth. The Ifin God promising you if in heaven, if in word. And the Prophet is the best in Ifin. Even the Muslim they claim that Muhammad he used to if his 13 wives and then he washed once. After he sleep, I mean, if, if this is true, how savage, how trashy, how dirty, how disgusting, and how beast. Why a man he is sleeping with 13 women in one night? What is that? You know, if you use your calculator, I'm not going to say eight hours. I would say Muhammad, he don't sleep. You know? Muhammad, he don't sleep. So, if we say, I mean, there is no way he wants to sleep, right? It would take, we will take eight hours. So, we will divide 16 hours on 13. Muhammad did not eat, he did not drink, he did not pray, he is just ifing. He spent the whole day ifing. What is the holy messenger and the holy God and what is that? You see, when God, he created Adam, how many Eve he created? One, right? So this is the nature, the Muslim they claim, that Islam is religion of fitra. You ask them what fitra? They say the natural thing. Okay, the natural thing that God created Adam and one Eve. Was Adam unhappy sexually? You know what I mean? 
Was he unhappy sexually? One Eve? Did Allah make wrong decision when he created one Eve? So Adam now in heaven, he have one Eve. How come when we go back to heaven, we don't have one Eve? If the women, if Allah is the one who is wise, and he made the right thing, he created one Eve. And actually at that time, maybe Allah should give him more Eve so he can multiply fast. In order to, to, to spread the human race in the earth. One woman will not be good or enough, logically, according to what Muslim they claim. And you will notice, according to Muhammad, that the children of Adam, they were fighting over the sisters who they will sleep with who. If you go in the Quran, because they have one Eve, so you will find the first one who gave sacrifice, it was the children of Adam. See, the Muslim, they claim that giving sacrifice to God is a pagan thing. But this is because they are hypocrite liars, as they, like their prophet. Their religion is the religion of sacrifice. Muhammad, he sacrificed, they sacrificed. They have a, the days, even both, you see, they, 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 they have a day they call it Al-Fatr, and the day they call it Adha. But in fact, both of them, they are Adha. Why? Because both of them, when they finish, they sacrifice animals and blood. But look here. Uh, chapter 5, verse number 27. Allah said to Muhammad supposedly, tell them, recite to them, between two brackets to the Jews, the story of the two sons of Adam, Habil and Abel, and Qabil, Cain. In truth, when each offered a sacrifice uh, to Allah, it was accepted from one, but not from the other. If you go and read the interpretation, you will see that one of them he gave a sheep, a lamb, and the other one he gave vegetation. Allah accepted the sheep, not the vegetation. And yet the Muslims, they claim that Muhammad is a prophet, right? So how Allah, he approved the person? Because now the two ch children of Adam, according to Muhammad, they are fighting over the sister. One, according to stupid Muhammad, uh, Eve, each time she gave birth, she gave birth to a twin. One boy, one girl. One boy, one girl. So what Adam he do, he marry this boy. Look how conservative he is. Suppose, suppose it make a difference. So he marry the twin boy from this twin to other twin girl, and he marry the twin boy from the other twin to other to this twin girl. You know what I mean? Like suppose he is switching. But this is very stupid anyway. Uh, however, one of the twin happened to be have a cross eyes so the two brothers they were fighting over one twin left she have no cross eyes <laughs> oh boy and then uh, uh, so uh, Allah he told Adam tell your sons to give sacrifice to me and the one I take his sacrifice he take the girl all right yeah, so uh, they gave sacrifice and then Allah, he accepted one and he took the girl and then his brother, he killed him because of that, you know, that, that thing. Uh, but here you notice that the founder of Islam, Muhammad, claiming that the way Allah, he choose who he elect and who he select is by sacrifice. Do you understand? And then we will find the verse in the Quran saying that the Jews, they said to Muhammad that Allah told us not to accept any messenger unless we promised. He, he asked us a promise. He taken our promise, an oath, not to believe in any messenger unless he bring us an offering which with a fire will come from heaven and shall devour. This is Allah requirement and is confirmed in the Quran and the other verse. 
and confirm with the story of Abraham. So why Muhammad could not practice what Allah asked for? Because he's a scam. Look what he said to them. Say, verily there come to you messengers before me with the clear signs and even with that you speak of when you did kill them. Now if we ask the Muslims, you see, I mean this is the most stupid excuse. As long Allah he knew the future and Allah he gave the same messengers or some messengers exactly as what they are asking for. Wonderful. What they did what the Jews did? They killed them. Correct? Alright. So why Allah gave them that miracle? <laughs> do you see the stupidity? He's saying, I uh, he's not going to do that. Allah has told him. Why? Because he gave you the same miracle for the previous messengers. What you did, you killed them. Okay. So because you will kill them anyway, you will not accept. I will not give you a mirror, but you did already. He did to many messengers before you. Are you, are you guys are you getting my point? Are you getting my point? Who did not understand what I'm trying to say? Why he did not? Why Allah will not do the same miracle? Like Muhammad gave an offering, sacrifice, and then Allah He sent fire, and then the Jews will see it, and oops, well, Muhammad is a prophet. Why He will not do it? Because you did it before, too many messengers before, as you speak, and you killed them. But this is a stupid excuse because you just confirmed that Allah He did it, even though they will kill them and they did kill them. So, how come? You cannot do it, for he is a false prophet. Are we good? It's a very stupid false excuse. It's like saying to you, uh, I, I, and, and the funny, he made conditions. He made condition not to accept any messenger unless he do this. So how then you say, I'm not going to do it? You told them, and Muhammad agree. To the point, not only he agree, he confirmed that Allah, he did exactly as not they are asking for. This is what Allah asked for. You see, Muhammad, he says, as you are asking for, but in fact, it was Allah who was asking for this. Allah. He took their promise. The Jews, they said, Verily Allah has taken our promise not to believe in any messenger unless he bring us an offering, bring us an offering, which a fire from heaven will come down and will devour. So this was request of who? It was request of Allah, not the Jews. Do you know this? Which means if the Jews did not ask for this, they are disobeying Allah. Do you agree? Are you getting my point? If if uh, if I sign an agreement saying, I, I promise you I will not accept a messenger unless he do this, and then you send fire, then how am I going to accept him? If they accept Muhammad, they are breaking the command of Allah, for Allah is the one who asked them to do that. So here Muhammad is being stupid many times in the same verse. One verse can you know make me demolish him and his faith. You don't ask the people, you don't put condition on them, and then when they follow your condition, you tell them, oh, I'm not going to do it. You have to change the condition before you say that. Any other question? Today we don't have too many people because it is like, you know, uh, 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 it was, uh, it's holiday, I mean, it's uh, like weekend, people, they go out, people are busy, people are uh, depend on your location in the world. 
uh, in USA, it hardly they woke up. All right. Exactly, Andrew. So Muhammad, he could not. I mean, this is simple. Do it. Is that is that in, is something hard for God to do? Just do it, man. How come he did it to everybody? I mean, he did it for for the sons of Adam fighting over a girl. Not to save a nation, not to be prophets. Two men fighting over a girl. Why he will not do it to Muhammad? Muhammad he fear, and the whole Quran proved that Muhammad have zero miracles. Even the one the Muslim is saying, all oh, the Quran says that the Prophet he split the moon. I challenge you to show me where it says that. Where it says that? Hmm? In fact, that was a stolen poet, poetry from a man, his name Imr al Qais. And this verse proving Muhammad to be a fraud. Why? Because he claimed that this is a sign of the day of judgment. So Muhammad, he saw the eclipse. He claimed that the moon split asunder. But who is the one who split the moon? Hmm? Who is the one? Where? Where it says Allah, he split the moon. Where it says Muhammad split the moon. It says, the hour drawn near and the moon has been cleft asunder. <laughs> Here you will see, it says that the people of Mecca, they requested the Prophet Muhammad, S-A-W, to show them a miracle. So he showed them a splitting of the moon. That's absolutely false. Why? Because their verses came all way after this verse, says Muhammad have zero miracle. Confirming that Muhammad is a fraud. Look how many verses in the Quran saying, "If how come Muhammad don't have a sign from his God?" Chapter six, verse number thirty-seven. Chapter ten, verse number twenty. Chapter thirteen, verse number seven. Chapter thirteen and chapter thirteen. If you go to chapter thirteen, actually, uh, you know the uh, many of you do not know maybe that when you see chapter 1 in the Quran, you think this is the first chapter. No. The first chapter in the Quran, according to Muslims, not according to the Quran they have today, is 96. 96. So, chapter uh, of the moon came way before the chapter 13. So, if a chapter 13 came way after the moon chapter, why they are saying, if only a miracle, just one. You know what I'm saying? This one came long after the chapter of the moon. So, if the moon miracle happened already, well, Muhammad did the miracle. Here it says, if only one, just one. Huh? If only one. And what the verse confirmed? Confirmed that Muhammad, he had no miracles. It says, those who disbelieve say, if only, only a miracle was sent down to him from his Lord. Say, Allah lead astray whoever he wills, and he guide to himself whoever he will. What, what, what the heck? Do you see the stupidity? They are asking for a miracle. What is the answer? Allah deceive as he will, and guide as he will. What is the answer? He answered them saying, Allah is Satan. Allah deceive. But they are asking just one sign. I mean, come on, we will believe in you. Just give us a sign. Just one. So all the claim that Muhammad and they have that Muhammad have miracles is a fraud. For the Quran itself confirm in many chapters that he have zero miracles. And then you will find in the hadith, there's tons of stories 
So how the hadith says, like Muhammad, he converted the lizard to Islam. A dead lizard. He was dead. A Bedouin was holding him in his back. Muhammad, he said to the Bedouin man, convert to Islam. The man, he said to him, laughing at Muhammad, if this dead lizard convert, I will convert. So Muhammad, he asked the lizard to say Shahada. <laughs> and the lizard came back to life and he said Shahada. And he became a Muslim lizard. But lizard is the enemy of Allah in different hadith. You remember? Lizard is the enemy of Allah and Muhammad, he ordered to kill him. But look what happened here. The Quran says Muhammad have zero miracles. The hadith says Muhammad have tons of miracles. We challenge the Muhammadan to show us one of those miracles in the Quran. Why the miracle of Jesus is mentioned in the Quran? But the miracle of Muhammad is in the hadith, which is written 300 years after Muhammad. Imagine, imagine Muhammad, he claimed to be a Christian prophet and he converted a chicken and then now the chicken get baptized. <laughs> this guy is hilarious, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, are we, did we have a good time today? Don't forget to subscribe. Today we have a low number of people because it is a weekend. People are still asleep maybe. And, uh, you know, but they will wake up and they will watch. But remember one thing, when the Muslims, they say to you that they respect Jesus, they absolutely love to insult Jesus. They insult the Bible. They insult Jesus. They insult Mary. They insult the Holy Spirit. Remember, and the Bible says that insulting the Holy Spirit, there's no forgiveness for it. What the Muslims, they say about the Holy Spirit? He is Jibreel. The one who was washing dishes to Fatima, the daughter of Muhammad, his daughter from his wife, which is not really his daughter. So the Muslim, they don't grant Jesus. They insult him. They insult Mary. Muhammad, he would sleep with her according to him. They insult the Bible. They insult the Holy Spirit. They insult the Father. And they change the name of the God to be a pagan God. His name is La. So whoever says to you, and especially from those who call themselves priests, that Muslim, they believe in the same God in the Bible. They are liars. There's one of two things, those priests. Either they are donkeys or they are satanic. Donkeys mean ignorant, stupid. They open their mouth without reading, studying. The Bible says it clearly, the one who denied the son is Antichrist. So how you say Abrahamic? The Bible says clearly that even the Jews, even the Jews who deny Jesus, they are not Abrahamic. Anyone can help me where we can find that? Let us remember. Did Jesus say to them, if your father is Abraham? Anyone remember the verse? If your father is Abraham, what do you do? Somebody pause the rest for us. So the Jesus was saying to the Jews, well, if, you are, if your father is Abraham, you do the work of Abraham. Those are the Jews. Are we listening? Jesus was not speaking to the Arab. He was speaking to Jews and Rabbi. If you are of your father Abraham, what do you do? You do as Abraham he does. So Jesus, even the Jews, he confirmed that they are not Abrahamic. Abrahamic is not just being born of Abraham. Abrahamic is to worship the God of Abraham not the devil.
So we want every one of you to teach his children, his family, his friends, that whoever says to you that Muhammad from Ishmael is a liar, it, you know, it, it challenge anyone who claims such a thing. Tell him, where do you get this from? Show me in the Bible, it says that Ishmael is the father of the Arab. Just tell him, okay, you know what? I have no problem. You are a priest. You have a big mouth. You are the teacher now. Where in the Bible we can find that Ishmael is the father of Muhammad or the grandfather or the Arab from him? Isn't it the Bible says that Ishmael, he married an Egyptian woman? <laughs> so Ishmael, his father is Aramaic. Born in Iraq, there was are not Arab. You can say he is uh, from the even uh, Assyrian if you want. You know, it, it, no problem. But his mother is Egyptian. She married him to an Egyptian. How in the world the sons are Arab? If you go to Genesis chapter twenty-one you will see Hajar married Ishmael to an Egyptian woman. So imagine, you are, uh, your father is Japanese, uh, your mother is uh, a Korean, your son is uh, from Albania. Who is the stupid here? Especially in the Bible, it says it clearly that it's not like maybe, you know, it's like not clear. It says it clearly she married him to an Egyptian woman. Hajar married Ishmael to an Egyptian woman. 21, 21. So, uh, uh, those priests, they are copy-paste. Once, I don't know who, he said the Arab are from Ishmael. And the rest they follow. They don't study, they don't search, they don't... Uh, this is absolutely false teaching. It's not biblical. have nothing to do with the Bible. And, you know, I repeat it many times, the Arab is not even an ethnic. Arab is not ethnic. Arab is a word, is an Aramaic word, meaning desert. So whoever live in the desert, they call them Arab. Arabia is a word meaning desert. Arabia. Aram is a word mean the one who live or the hills, high hills. So the Aramaic from Aram was called because he inhabitant of this territory. The the one who live in the desert, which is called Arab, which means if you live in Las Vegas, you are Arab now, according to the Aramaic language. If you live in Arizona, you are Arab. For those are people inhabitant, but Arab usually it meant not only live in the desert; they are the Bedouin. Actually, even the if you go in the Quran, you will see the Quran make it even more clear. If you remember the idiot ultimate fort, he want to teach me Arabic. He said the word Arab mentioned in the Quran does not mean. Uh, Bedouin, the Arab is the Bedouin. Chapter 9, verse number 90, chapter 9, verse number 97, chapter 9, verse number 98, chapter 9, 99. I mean, it's all over. Okay, so you will see uh, that the Arab, all those uh, verses mention the Arab, the Arab. Who is the Arab? The Bedouin. Do you see the word desert? Do you see it? This is the Muslim translation. This is not my translation. People who live in the desert. So, where is the word desert here? The, the word Arabia is desert. 
Al-Arab, they got their name from where they live, not the opposite. Uh, yeah, this is why you know we need to uh, we need to inform the priest if if he because some of them they are good people you know, but they are they don't they lazy you know copy paste copy paste I mean if you open any video. Speaking about the Muslims, you will see tons of priests saying the Muslims are from Ishmael. Well, first of all, 95% of the Muslims are not even Arab. Secondly, uh, when we say Arab, mean people of the desert. This is, you know, this is what the language is. Arab is not even an ethnic. This is why you see, you might see an Arab. He have a dark skin. The other one he have white. The other one he have. A, in many colors, they don't look the same. Actually, all those who live in countries like Bahrain, Qatar, Emirat, and some of Saudi Arabia, they are originally from Pakistan, which means India. That's why if you go, actually, let me show you. If I show you now the image of the prince of Qatar, he is a false prince, but thanks to the English, they made him a prince. Uh, If you look at the image, you are looking at a Pakistani guy. Him, her father, doesn't matter. Look at this image. If, if you do not know this guy is from where, if I did not tell you that this is the ruler of Qatar now, isn't it this guy from Pakistan? He is, right? Look at them, all of them. They have Pakistani hair, Pakistani color, Pakistani skin, Pakistani mustache, Pakistani beard. They are from Pakistan. Those, for sure, they are from Pakistan. Look at this one. I mean, I can show you one by one. All of them are the same. Uh, look, this is the father. This is the one who was the prince before this guy. Oh, this is a video. We don't want video. Oh, it's not a video, actually. It is CNN. I don't want CNN. Hold on. Yeah, look at the father. And you tell me, is this guy from Pakistan or from where? Man, advertising everywhere. You cannot open a channel without scam. I cannot even open a picture. You close one, one picture, then it will open. Let us skip this one then. Can you believe it? I can't find one decent web page to open something without pictures. Without uh, advertising and scam and... Anyway, you can search them yourself. And you will see, they are really from Pakistan. Their shape, their shape, the shape of their uh, uh, body, their bum, their ass. They're women, they are from Pakistan. You know, they have the shape of Indian from Pakistan. Uh, yet they call them Arab, you know. They call them Arab. But are they? Yeah, they are. 
They live in the desert, but they are not ethnic. They are immigrant. Look at this guy. Hmm. You tell me, where is this guy from? And by the way, now their look is changing because they are marrying women. They choose like, you know, they choose like white women, etc. They marry, they are very rich. Yeah, where is this guy from? You tell me. Go check how people in Pakistan look like. Yeah. And you know, if you look in the map, you might think, okay, how those people, they come from Pakistan. Actually, Pakistan is so close to them. It's so close. You know, the, the, the Persian Gulf is very narrow in some places. It's like, you know, I don't know, maybe two hours in the ship. It's very close. Some places actually, uh, it's, it's not even a few miles. Uh, let us open the map for you. Yeah, if you look actually in the area as an example, Dubai. Dubai. Let us zoom in. You can measure, maybe somebody can help us, and measure what is the distance really between Dubai and uh, the other side, you know? Remember, all those borders, all those things wasn't exist before. And India was all the way actually to, to, to Bangladesh. And Persia used to expand sometime, which means all this area is Persia, sometimes they shrink. So look how, how far they are from the, from, from the other side of the land. Crossing this part, which is not far, maybe somebody can give us exact number if somebody has some knowledge, or can you, if you have Google Earth actually, you can measure. You know, you can measure literally how far it is. And wh where is the, uh, this is Saudi Arabia here, let's go to Saudi Arabia. This is United, United Arab Emirates. Uh, this is Ahmed Abad. This is Pakistan. All the way here, I, I wish I can uh, draw. Uh, this is the Gulf of Oman here in this area. And this is here, Pakistan, in here. No, this is Pakistan today. But Pakistan before wasn't here. This is all new, you know, new borders. So this is this is Pakistan here. It's just, uh, you know, uh, crossing little distance, especially if you come from here, from this area. You know, very close. And, you know, it's very normal for them to come and occupy this land and uh, live in it. Why not? Have you heard about suicide bombing in uh, yesterday in Kabul? 35 Shia children were killed and over 70 injured. No, I did not hear. But Islam is peace, my friend, and if you don't believe me, ask George Bush, Obama, and uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> Those brothers, they are not Muslim, brother. Muslim don't do that. Islam teach peace, brother. Yeah. Anyway, I think we have enough for today. I hope we did learn something good. Don't forget to download my videos. And remember one thing, that Muslims, they never respected Jesus. They never respected the Bible. They never respected your God. Never respected Mary, as you see. 
they insult the, the Holy Spirit, they insult Abraham, they insult all the prophets, only to glorify and to purify Muhammad, the filthy Muhammad. One target is, they are the target, is to worship Muhammad. And they are willing to step in every name, every name, even the name of the Holy God. Very satanic cult, and they try to deceive your children, so you better warn them and not to let your churches do as many or some churches doing, inviting Muslims to teach in the mosque. The priest who do that is satanic. He is satanic. Or teaching the children that Muslims and Christians worship the same God. This is absolutely false. This is against the Bible word by word. And we can provide, and we do, and we did, with tons of reference from the Bible, we don't worship the same God. The God of Islam is the devil. There is no question of that. If we have the same God, we will have the same heaven. We don't. Our God is holy. The Lord, he said, he and she, they will not get married. They will be the same as angels. He and she, not only he, he and she, there is no false promises of sexuality in heaven. We will be different creatures. If we have the same heaven, then we can say maybe, but we don't. Their heaven is a heaven of porn, sex, lust. If we have the same God, we should have the same name. We don't. If we have the same God, their God should be called the Father. The Quran deny that. If we have the same God, we should. this God should teach the same ethic. Don't do this. Don't do this. The Ten Commandments. Muhammad, he broke every single one of them, and he forced his followers to break them. If we have the same God, we should have the same belief that the Spirit of God is God. Muslims don't believe in the Spirit of God. They believe that the Spirit of God is an angel. We, as a Christian, believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Father is a person. The Messiah is a person. One God. Three person. The Muslims, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They believe in the Holy Spirit as Jibreel. So how we say we have the same God? So Muhammad is a thief. He stole names. He inserted them in his books. He gave them different value, different ranks, different attribute to deceive you. When the Muslims, they say Islam is against fornication. In fact, Islam is the fornication cult. When the Quran says that Islam is against prostitution, the fact the Quran says it clearly in chapter 33, that prostitution is okay by Allah. When the Muslims they say Islam is against lying, the fact Islam teach that lying is an obligation for Muslims, chapter 3, verse 28, you can lie. Even Allah, he said, Aka Muhammad, a man, he can lie to his wife, the wife, she can lie to her husband, and that is not a sin. So even if that, you know, I mean, he destroyed the basic cell of society, which is the family. You see, society is thousands of people live together. If each one of us lie to his wife and the wife lie to her husband, we will have a children who learn how to lie because they watch the parents and they knew, they watch what the father is doing and what the mother is doing. The mother, she lied to the father the father lied to the wife, and the children, they learned how to lie. This is a society. This is why Middle East is a very corrupt society. You know, many of you say to me, don't you miss the Middle East? I say, over my dead body, I will miss it. The most corrupt ever, disgusting land is the Middle East. The judge is corrupt. The president, the prince, the, the king, the police, the grocery store, the guy who give you... Uh, uh, the one you buy vegetable from him, not a single one have decency. Corruption is everything. Their life is corruption. So I don't regret not going there. I regret to be born there. But it's not my choice. It is the land of corruption. It is a land of evil. It is a land I learned nothing from it except lying is the way to live. Lying is the only way to live there. To be decent with decency and live there, you will struggle badly. 
Anyway, if you have any Muslim cleric, he claimed to have knowledge and he can debate us about Islam, feel free. We would love to hear you. We would love to debate you. Uh, we can give him a Skype, he can call us, and we can have a good time. Uh, I hope that today we have a good time. Don't forget, please, to download my previous video because in a few hours I'm going to delete it. And this video too, I will leave it now for the weekend. Download, because later I will delete. I would love to say thank you very much for being here. We have a guy, his name is Perfect Dawa. Is that the same guy, Perfect Dawa, the one we made him shish kebab before? Is that the same one, Perfect Dawa? The perfect dawah made him perfect shish kebab. Abdul Somad, is that a Muslim? They are not the word of God, but the word from God. They all have the same purpose, that God is one and only without any partner. You see here how Muslim they lie? How you say without partners, but you associate your God, Allah, with Muhammad. You associate the knowledge of God with the knowledge of Muhammad. You associate the worship of God with the worship of Muhammad. You make God pray on Muhammad and serve Muhammad. And yet they claim that they believe in one God. And their Quran says, if Allah wanted to have a partner, we would like to take it from ourselves. So how Allah is one, but if you want to take a partner, he will take the partner from ourselves. This is how the Muslim, you know, the Muslims is like, a, you know, those, those chicken birds who speak, the parrot. Welcome, welcome, Allah is one, Allah is one. But the second you ask him, if you are a person who believe in Allah, and you don't associate with Allah, why you have to say Shahada, name of Muhammad next to Allah? Why? Not only that. See, the Quran says, if you go, uh, let us go to the different verse in the Quran so we can love together. Hey, Abdul Samud, you will be famous now. People will be dying laughing at what you said. Uh, watch carefully, and I challenge you to give me the answer because your answer will be priceless for us. I will put the Quran on the screen. So people can laugh with me at the oneness of Allah. The people who claim that they believe in one God. Sorry there, Abdul Samud. Watch with me. We go in the Quran. It says that the Christian and the Jews and the Jews. Uh, let us see. According to the Quran, that the Christian and the Jews, they took their monks and their rabbis as gods instead of Allah and the Messiah. Translation is false, but I will not go in that translation now. Look what happened. If we ask this Abdul Samud, how the Christians and the Jews, they took their priests and their rabbis as gods? Shall we wait for the answer? Abdul Samud, give me the answer. I'm waiting. How the Christians and the Jews became kuffar by taking their rabbis and their monks as gods? Give me the answer. Give me the answer, otherwise I will block you. You know, I'm giving you a chance to speak to me as an adult. Don't change the topic. How the Christians and the Jews, why the Christians and the Jews the Quran described them that they took their rabbis and their monks as gods. I'm waiting for the answer. 
You can copy paste from the internet. I don't care. Just give me the answer. Give me an answer. You accept. If you post one more post without giving me the answer, I will block you. I don't have time for kids here. You are, you are doing diarrhea now. If we have the same God, we will have the same heaven. You don't have the same God. Even Ibrahim, his name is wrong. Your prophet, one he say Abraham, one he say Ibrahim. Stupid prophet. You don't know how to say it. So I'm waiting for you now. Okay, block him, admin. He will not answer. He's a coward, son of Muda. Look what happened in this verse. According to this verse, if you ask the Muslims scholars, not those potatoes, donkey copy paste. And their scholars, by the way, they are copy paste too. According to the scholars of Islam, they took their rabbis and their monks, which means they stopped following Jesus and God. They start obeying their rabbis and their monks. So the one who do that is committing shirk, associating. They are not taking the command of God, which is given to Jesus, or the command of God given to Moses, which is not Jesus' command, neither is Moses' command according to Muslim. This is Allah' command. So the one who take a human being as Lord, by what? By taking their command against what Allah taught is a mushrik. But this is what the Muslim do. The Quran say, you do muta. Muhammad said, don't do muta. Which one the Muslim follow? Quran or Muhammad? Who is their Lord? Muhammad. And we can show you tons of example. In this example, Muhammad is their Lord and the Muslims are mushrikeen and the person in front of you. For the Quran confirm that the one who take a human being instead of God to be his Lord is a mushrik and who is Muhammad is he a human being or not and what is the message of Allah it's in the Quran if Allah spoke to Muhammad which he never did according to Muslims he sent Jibreel the message must be in the Quran why the command of Allah is in the Quran is Allah words Hadith, and the Hadith can be Da'if. Is the Hadith preserved? The Muslim they will say no. The Quran says, "Inna alayna hafzuhu wa Quranahu." It is an us to uh, like to protect it, to gather it, and to recite it. And Allah did not do this and did not do that. He was speaking about the Quran. Allah never promised in the Quran to protect Hadith. Actually, Muhammad, he said in the Hadith, anyone who writes from me anything beside the Quran, he should erase it. And this is showing you that all the Hadith, according to Muhammad, is invalid. Do you see it? This is Sahih. This is Sahih Muslim. Anyone, the chapter name, the book of Zuhd, softening of heart, look how softening of heart, chapter of verification of hadith, and the ruling on writing down knowledge. The Prophet said, don't take down, let me zoom, don't take down anything from me, which means hadith. And he who took down anything from me except the Quran, he should efface that and narrate from me. Do you see what happened? Do you see how stupid this religion is? The hadith saying, don't write hadith, the Muslim they write the hadith. They write the same hadith. He just told you don't write it. He just told you erase it. So all the books of hadith is invalid. Muhammad, he told them only to write down the Quran. And this is Sahih. And this is showing you how stupid this, they call themselves Ummah. Their prophet, he told them not to write hadith, they write hadith. And then they follow the hadith. 
they don't follow the Quran. And then they take the command on the Hadith against the command in the Quran, which their Prophet told them erase it. So do you see why we say this is a very stupid religion, if we can call it a religion? The guy, he just said, don't write down what I'm saying. The Abdul, he wrote down. The Prophet said, don't write down what I'm saying. You're stupid. He just told you don't do that. Do you see the stupidity? He just told you, if you do, and this is 300 years after. 300 years after, the Muslim confirmed that Muhammad, he said, don't write hadith. They start collecting hadith and writing, and they wrote in the book, the Prophet said, don't collect hadith. Okay, brother? And what kind of a brain those people have? And you know, I'm very grateful, by the way, for the hadith. Because the Quran is, is empty book, there's nothing there. You can't understand anything, stupid book. The hadith, actually, is the biggest problems for the Muhammadan. This is why Erdogan, he made a big conference, we need to filter, and then the, uh, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, he mentioned the same. They are trying to filter and filter, 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 until one day, no hadith is left. All the embarrassing one will disappear, but it's too late. They are published, or the internet killed Islam. Everything is published already, too late. But you can filter now. Good luck for you. Uh, okay, it's time now to go. So guys, I want to say to you, uh, don't go, and uh, I'm going. <laughs> the Prophet said, don't write hadith, and they write down, don't eat hummus. The Prophet, he was eating hummus. He said, the Prophet says, don't eat hummus. I mean, if those are the scholars writing this and doing this, you know, how, how the one who wrote this hadith can justify the stupidity? The guy he just told you 300 years ago, don't write it. Not only don't, if you wrote, erase it. Which means, even if something you did, huh? That it just destroy it. Only Quran keep only. They don't listen. They worship Muhammad blindly. They cannot live without his words. The words of Allah is not enough. Right? Uh, yeah, don't go by go, but go. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I think it's time to go. I want to say thank you all for being here. I hope we have a good time. Again, don't forget to download the video and don't forget to subscribe. And if you are a Muslim, brother, subscribe and subscribe, subscribe and subscribe because Allah, he says, when you do bad things and you undo or you do good thing, you will get double. So now, subscribing to me is a bad thing. And subscribing, you will get double. So think about it. You subscribe 50 times. You unsubscribe 50 times. You will get what? 100 reward. So you made 50 bad, and you made extra 50, you know, extra 50. What do you want more? So you spend your day, subscribe and subscribe. Christian Prince subscribe, oh, this is bad deed. You unsubscribe, Allah give you double, brother. This is how we can make money, brother. The intelligent Muhammad. What a stupid religion. And not only that, he said to them that doing one good thing erase the bad thing. So the Muslim, what he do? He go rape a woman and then he give five dollars donation to the mosque. You see? One good, one bad. The good erase the bad. And at the end of the day, it's a destiny. So my friend, it was a destiny today. Muslim, don't be upset from me. It was destiny for me today to make your prophet shish kebab and to expose your Allah and to give him and to leave my fingerprint on his butt. Destiny. What you can do about it? Don't complain. Don't be upset. It was destiny. Everything I said today, it was destiny. The Quran says so. The Hadith says so. The Prophet says so. And would say so 
we end with say so thank you all for being here may the lord bless you christ is lord and muhammad is say so the prophet said the prophet said they don't even understand what who is their prophet they don't know who is he there is no history of him and but but all what we know when his father she gave birth to him a light came from her vagina reach all the way to the palace of Damascus true story yet nobody in Mecca saw the light but people who live in Syria they saw the light it's a miracle this is the first vagina light never been made before never been seen before and never will be seen in the future one time vagina that is Muhammad thank you all may the Lord bless you and I will see you soon again Christ is Lord and Muhammad is a fraud Without lies, Islam dies. Thank you.